and uh, she is still in recovery, still doing good. I saw Brother Ken, he came by. And uh, well, let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will continue to stress. She just, she just want to be extra cautious right now and just be protective. And uh, but let's pray for uh, Sister Elizabeth and Brother Ken. Amen. Let's continue to pray for my sweet mother-in-law. She has been down on her back, and uh, we know God is able. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, today. Lord, we come before you with such great thanksgiving. You have been so good to us, God, in these last several weeks. God, you have revealed yourself in a whole new way. God, you have met us, God, in these moments where, God, we didn't know what the tomorrow held and what was going to happen, but, Lord, you came through. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that those who had God, they even had to go to the hospital, Lord, but they're back home and they're doing good and everything's going well. And for that, God, I want to thank you. But Lord, there are some needs tonight, God. We ask that you would reach down and touch my sweet mother-in-law. God, touch her back today. Touch Mr. Brother Jordan, God, and Sister Miss Jordan, God, touch them today. Encourage them. I pray, God, the Lord, you continue to touch Mr. Donnie. Lord, I pray, God, that you would continue to work on these circumstances, God, that only you can touch and you can only minister to. Lord, it is still by your stripes we are healed. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I wonder tonight, does anybody just feel like worshiping a little bit? It's been a while since we've been able to just come in and worship and thank the God. God. Amen. So why don't we do that tonight? Why don't we just, amen, if you want to get out of your seat, amen, and begin to worship the Lord, amen, let's entertain the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Set free. 
more. He come looking for you and me. Hallelujah. I'm grateful that when I called on him, Jesus come running. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that he didn't leave me like he found me. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that God did not leave me like he found me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm grateful that God did not have to find me on a bar stool. God did not have to find me in a world uh, out there somewhere, but I'm thankful that God didn't let me sit in a church house and be lost. Amen. <laughs> Hello. Amen. I'm grateful that God will find you no matter where you are if you got a heart for Him. Amen. I promise you He'll find you. Amen. I'm grateful for it. Brother Bob, are you grateful? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 When I look out over this congregation and I see uh, the different places where we all come from, it's amazing to me that how God brought us all together for this one purpose, and that is to further his kingdom. When I look out over this crowd, there's people from, my goodness, from Texas, people from Good Lord, all the way from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Hallelujah. God will even save people from Philadelphia, Mississippi. I'm just so thankful and overwhelmed tonight just simply because we're back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. What does the scripture Amen. Because the scripture says that this too shall pass. That's why you got to get a hold of the horn, the horns of the altar, and you don't let it go until these things pass. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you come for a word from the Lord tonight. I feel like God has given me something. Amen. That I want to preach to you, so if you return back to your seats, amen. But don't sit on your worship. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I know this is still, uh, everybody's trying to get back into the groove and everybody's trying to get back into the, some kind of normalcy as far as back work schedule and trying to figure out what's going to be the phase two and phase three and whatever phase is coming, but hallelujah. Every day is a good day to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'm very grateful and thankful. Amen. Uh -huh. I'm also very thankful that we have, uh, through this process, has taught us and, and helped us, amen, to where that we are continuing our live feed and will continue to do so because we've had so many great response of people being blessed um, through our live stream. And uh, I want to thank Brother uh, Lane for being back there. And, and uh, he has upgraded the things as we speak. And, I uh, just want to give him kudos. Thank you so much, Brother Justin and uh, Sister Renee. Thank you so much, Amen, for being so flexible and helping us in the last two weekends. For all of you that came and helped us to be able to take it, it felt like we were back in the American Legion Hall again, but we were having to set up and take down. And uh, for all of you that came to help us with that, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it, and it just shows you, amen, the unity of the body whenever people come together for the cause of Father's God's kingdom. Amen. amen. Uh, we, we had people that got to hear the gospel, and whether they wanted to or not, but we were outside for the last two weeks. <laughs> amen. I'm grateful that uh, they, uh, we didn't have no complaints. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to preach to you a thought that God has birthed into my spirit. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is uh, hot off the press. God gave me this today. And I felt like God wanted to speak to us tonight because God don't want us to just go back into the routine. God wants us to move beyond what we've ever done or been before. And I don't know about you. We can slip back into that old rut if we want to. We can go back into the old lifestyle. 
Amen. We can go back to the same old habits that we were in before God found us. Or we can go into the dimensions of God's power, his presence, that he has waited for this moment. Monday night uh, was such a wonderful time. If you were not here Monday night in prayer, I promise you, you'd miss something very unique and something very special. Tongues interpretation went forth. And, uh, and God is speaking, and uh, he is allowing us to understand that the same revelation that Peter had when Jesus asked him, Who do you say that I am? And Peter told him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. God is still looking for people who know who he is. Amen. Yeah, right. And uh, when Brother Jared gave out the interpretation, uh, that word God spoke to me and I felt like God God dealt with me about he, when Peter uh, passed from this life, we know what the keys are the, he said upon this rock will I build my church the key is the revelation of who he is yeah. he is the son of God he's God manifested in the flesh yeah. we understand that's the key we know who he is but I believe that there were some other keys on that jingle and on that key ring that I believe that God has just been waiting for a generation amen that would get desperate and hungry enough amen to begin to pursue after him so he can now find a generation that he can hand some keys back to um, I just found out just before service that, that we just had another um uh, young person in our community that has uh, that has lost their life simply because of the addictions that's in our world today. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I'm ready to start seeing people delivered Amen. from Amen. drugs, from alcohol, from lifestyles that are just breathing about. And I believe that if we will get to the place where God is trying to bring us to, I believe that we can have the authority and the power to say unto these mountains, go swimming. Amen. Amen. Uh, the message that I feel that God wants us to hear tonight is, uh, is a word that uh, Paul had come to the realization and revelation of. And uh, Paul understood the depths of his love and passion he had for God. There was something inside of Paul that Anything that he faced in life, he, it could not deter him or it could not make him turn away from his commitment that he made to God. I want to talk to you on this simple of, uh, subject tonight, the secret of contentment. How many of you would like to finally get to a place in your walk with God to where that you can really live a contented life? There ain't up here one day and you're down here the next day and, and, and get in a place like Paul said, and none of these things move me, nor height, nor death, nor principalities. It doesn't matter what we're facing in life. No pandemic, no COVID-19, no flu bug, no swine flu. Come on, somebody. Listen, you got to understand, we got some things we're facing in our day that Paul faced. But Paul was unmovable. He was unshakable. Yeah. He found a place in his life to where he sold out to this gospel yeah. that he come to find is a true and living gospel that will change your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Something transpired in Paul's life to where that he understood that I will be content no matter if I find myself in a prison cell or whether I find myself shipwrecked having to float in the shore on a piece of lumber, nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I come before you as your pastor and tell you we have to get to the place to where that we learn to be content in Christ no matter what is on the outside going on. Amen. 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 Paul begins his letter to the church of Philippi to encourage them and to thank them for their faithfulness in sending the aid while he was there in prison. They were given him and sending it to him to where that 
He could be sustained. He could find out the reports of what's going on in the churches. And uh, Paul was just giving them thanks. And the church that was there at Philippi was something very special for Paul. And uh, Paul understood that in, even, even in Paul's writing, when he's telling the story about the church at Philippi, we understand that while he's writing this letter, we find in Philippians chapter 4, we find that he's sitting in a prison cell and he's writing to the church. And Master, in the story of Paul, Paul spent most of his time in a prison cell, or he spent a lot of time behind bars. I wonder today, um, what what is it that would cause us to uh, to want to second guess our commitments and our covenants to God? Man, you got to understand something. Paul was not in the Paul was not in the prison cell because he was doing something wrong. Right. He was in the prison cell because he was doing something right. Yes. And we find that Paul is writing the letter to the church of Philippi. The church of Philippi was established in Acts chapter 16. We find the willingness to Paul's commitment to go and be committed to spread the gospel. After that he had his experience on the road of Damascus, whenever he heard the voice of the Lord saying, Paul, why, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And God revealed himself. He said, my name is Jesus in whom you are persecuting. I noticed that God was not pointing out that he was persecuting people, but he was persecuting Jesus. Why are you persecuting me? We understand that we have to view from God's point of view that people that God has put into our lives are not just is not just people that lives in your neighborhood it's not just people that live or work alongside of you on your job but Jesus sees them and views them as himself God help us today to understand God is calling us back to an hour where we begin to get involved soul winning and be passionate about soul winning. Amen. So Paul is writing the letter. He's in a prison cell. He's, uh, he, he's telling the church of Philippi that was established there in Acts chapter 16. This, there was a lady that was there in chapter uh, 16 in, in Acts and her name was Lydia. Lydia was involved in a prayer, in a prayer uh, meeting and and Paul comes into the into the town there, and he finds that there was no temples, there was no place for the church or the Christians that would gather. So they would go on, out on a riverbank. They would go out and they would begin to pray, and they would seek after the Lord. They had nobody to teach them, to show them, and to direct them. So God sends Paul and Silas into he made the Philippi, and he finds that there's a prayer meeting going on. And Paul and Silas wants to go and be a part of a prayer meeting. There is where he meets Lydia. Lydia is now baptized in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that she was a leader of this prayer group. As a matter of fact, we find that after her baptism, she had asked Paul and Silas, I want you to come home with me. Because there's some more things I want you to teach me and I want you to show me. I think that there is a moment where we will start spending more time outside of the church than what we do in the church. God has proven that there are hungry people that are outside of this building, but you have to go to where they are before they come to where we are. You have got to get to the point where we understand Jesus Amen. The whole purpose that he gave the disciples and the 120 people in the upper room gave them the Holy Ghost was to send them out two by two to win a lost world. Amen. And can I tell you that Jesus from that very moment, he told them, he said, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If the kingdom of heaven was at hand in that day, how close are we to the coming of the Lord today? Amen. If, 
if COVID-19 and this pandemic has not waking you up enough, amen, understand that we are closer to the rapture of the church than what we have ever been before. Amen. Hallelujah. Even to the point, I believe, amen, that with this generation shall see, amen, the great things that God has prophesied in his word. She invites Paul and Silas to come, but on her way, Amen. And she was, I've read this story so many times, but so many times we read it just so we can check off the box and say we've done our Bible reading. We've done it through a whole year. And as I begin to take my time and read through the scripture, while they are on the way to Lydia's home, we find that there is a woman who has been following them around and was constantly just, just over and over. She's She's, she's saying things. She's really, the Bible says that she was irritating Paul. I don't know if that old saying where, uh, the old saying, I'm sure most of you have seen the, where the guy's got up on his desk and he says, I've got one nerve left and you're on it. I'm sure that that's probably the way that Paul felt towards this woman because she was following them no matter where they went. And she was a demon-possessed woman. And she went around following them, revealing the identity. Listen, she was identifying the identity and the purpose why Paul and Silas was there. I want you to hear this tonight because I believe God is trying to help us to see something because this woman who was demon-possessed was following them around and was revealing their identity and their purpose of why they were there in Philippi. Let me just tell you, saints of God, the enemy knows who's in Laranja. Yes, he does. The enemy, amen, has already picked up that you can't shake them PLC people. Amen. There's something about that church body of believers who meet on Mill Plant, amen, in LaRonja, Louisiana, they got easily shaken. Amen. I thought that COVID-19 would cause them to fear and run. Amen. But there's something about that relationship that they have, amen, that they are not easily scared. Yeah. She began to get to the point where she, uh, er she, she aggravated and irritated Paul to the point to where he got so angry, he just turned around and looked at her and told her and rebuked the devil out of her, and that devil came out of her. He cast the devil out of her. Oh, I wish that you and I could get to that place and walk in relationship with God to where that there's some things that irritate us that we just get bold enough on, where we can just turn around and look it right square in the eyes and say, I command you through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Church, let me tell you, we have got to get to the place to where we know who's in us. Amen. We have got to get to the point to where we understand that God has given you the privilege and the honor of being filled with the glory and the power that you have Jesus Christ living in you. You're not some weak minded people. I got confidence in you. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. Why did He give you the Holy Ghost? Because He wants you to do great exploits up in the earth. Don't hang your head because you're a Christian. Don't hang your head in this moment and hour because you're afraid of what somebody's going to say about you. Hallelujah. Amen. I look at Brother Tyler over here. And and we spent time in Bible study together yesterday. And such a great time to be together with you, Brother Tyler. And, and, and we understand he's got a hunger for God now. And he's searching after God. He wants to know God in a, in a way he's never known him before. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. This wonderful man helped us to put together a, uh, a benefit tournament, a softball tournament. And I, I never knew, Brother Tyler, how many people knew you. But everybody that was out there said, we're here because of Tyler. We're here because Tyler asked us to come. Brother Tyler, if you've got that much 
uh, if you got that much voice in these people's lives, then by the help and grace of God, when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, I baptize you Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, let that same power that was on Paul, let that same anointing that was on Paul, for the power let it come on you, buddy. Hallelujah. Don't be intimidated. Amen. You've got what they need. Hallelujah. Right, right, yeah. Hallelujah. Hear me tonight, church body. We have got to get back to the place to where we put our hands back on the plow and we start moving towards what God called yes, us to do. Yes, Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, God is looking for a people that he can hand some keys back to. Amen. I told you a few weeks ago, God told me in prayer. Amen. That he was going to raise up a people who are kingdom hearted people who are not in this for themselves. They're not in this for any type of entitlement, but they're in it so that the lost can be saved. I come to tell you tonight in the fear of the Holy Ghost, God is going to have a raven of people that's going to do some unhappy wonderful things upon the earth. But I ask you tonight to in this building and those of you that watch another way of Facebook Live, do you want to be in the number? Do you want to be the vessel? Do you want to be the vessel that God has the peace to so that you can set your people free? We need people set free in this hour. I refuse to go back. I refuse to go back. Hallelujah. Amen. If anything that COVID-19 has taught me, amen, is to pull it up to a place where I can use it for a stepping stone, then it gets me a little bit higher. Hallelujah. Let me get back to my message. I want to, I want to, I want you to focus on something here tonight because in, in Acts chapter 16 and 16 and 17, this is what this woman who was possessed by the devil. This is what she was proclaiming to everybody that was listening to her. Listen to me. Paul did not have to advertise anything. Paul did not have to go put up on the billboards, amen, and on the flashing signs of what he was there to do. The devil did it for him. Whoa! Oh, I'm ready for the devil to start advertising for the people I see. I'm ready for the devil to start telling them, don't you go to that church because if you go to that church, you're going to get changed. Oh, hallelujah. This is, look what this, uh, what, what, look what she was proclaiming to everybody. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of Div 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 divination, there we go, met us, who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl, following Paul and Silas, she cried out, saying, These are the servants of the Most High God. This is what a demonic possessed lady is proclaiming to Philippi that these two men who came, they are connected right. to the Most High. Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, you'll get it in a minute. Right. Uh -huh. Thank you. These are the these two men are connected to the Most High God. All right. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on. Well, let me ask you. When you walk out in the community and you walk on your job and you walk around in your in your neighborhood, what is the enemy saying about you? Oh, that's just Billy Bob. You ain't going to worry about him. Hello? I wonder. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is a place you can get in God to where you will be known in three places. Amen. You can get a relationship with God to where heaven knows who you are. The earth will know who you are. 
And those who live beneath the earth will know who you are. Amen. You ask the sons of Sceva if there's a difference in people who are acquainted and connected to the Most High God. Ask the sons of Sceva if it's important that the enemy knows who you are. Amen. Paul, I know, that same old demonic spirit that was on that little girl, identifying this is one that's connected to the Most High God, is the same ones that was dealing with a young man one day, and the son of Sceva was going to go out there and deliver this young man, and that demon spoke out of that man and told him, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? There is a place where you can get in God that you will be known in the supernatural spiritual realm. And whether you want to be there or not, and if you want to just continue to just be a half-hearted Christian, and you just want to be somebody that attends the church, and you just want to be not God, I want the enemy to know, I want this community to know that that man is connected to the most high God. He has a relationship, amen, that I've never seen before. I want people to say, when I get around Billy Jesus, there's something different that I feel coming from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I pray that when you walk in the building, that the devils that are in that building begin to tremble because the one that is connected to the Most High God just walked in the building. Oh, hallelujah. I know this is a Wednesday night, but I come to preach to you tonight. Amen. There is a, what is the secret of being content? You know what the secret of being content is when you know whose you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get revelation of really, truly who's living inside of you, right. then why in the world are we shaking and running? And right. amen. Why are our hands lit down? Why are our knees shaking? Uh, why are we closing the door? Why are we closing the blinds? Uh, why are we not wanting to get out of this hour when this is the very hour that the church needs to be activated? Right. Hallelujah. I'm going to say something that it could offend some people, and if it does, I'm sorry. But I'm going to tell you something. We have one church that we know. Amen. It's been all over the news, and and uh, and I'm not saying he's right, but I'm not telling you he's wrong either. But I wish to God that we had some people that would that would get some Holy Ghost indignation stirred up inside of you, and you begin to let this world and let people know, uh, Amen. I'm like Paul and Silas. I'm going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can play your flute. You can play your, your harmony if you want. Uh, but I'm not bowing down. I'm not going to get me in. Uh, hallelujah. God died for me. Uh, amen. I'm going to live for him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, what happened as they went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit and by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. If you don't want to listen to Peter's message on the day of Pentecost, then go back and find out what was Paul preaching because even the devil said he's teaching to us the salvation message. Don't tell me that Paul and Peter was preaching two different messages. Yeah, they were preaching the same gospel that Jesus Christ yeah. him gave, and himself gave to the 12 disciples. I come to tell the church body tonight if we will start preaching the same message that they preached, yeah. then we will start seeing the same evidence that they had to, that they received. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what this lady was saying. She is telling the people who they are and what they are speaking was the way into salvation. She's identifying. Paul did not have to advertise the devil was doing it for him. 
These are the men who are connected, the servants of the Most High, and they come to proclaim to us the way of salvation. God, help us to get to the place. And we're not in competition with nobody. But Lord, let it be said of us amongst this community that they speak the message and they will teach you the way of salvation. I don't want to be just another church, amen, with another good choir, and with another good musicians, uh, but I want us to be known uh, as somebody who it has the salvation message uh, being preached over this pulpit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Paul was telling them how to be saved, and she identified this spirit, identified this is the, sal the salvation message. The same message that Paul was preaching. Let me ask you something. What is the enemy saying about us? Do they get nervous when we open our mouth? Does the enemy get nervous when we start walking with a Bible underneath our hand and a, and a, a Bible study chart underneath the other hand? Does, does the enemy get nervous when we walk into the community? Does the enemy get nervous when we walk into criticism? We walk into the Laranja supermarket. I wonder, does the enemy, amen, do they start saying, oh, that's those, those people. There's those servants of the Most High God. And if, if you don't want to know the salvation message, you better get away from them because that's all they know. Let me get off of that. They had Paul and Silas, amen. We understand that they were... Uh, the men that uh, were making a profit off of this lady because of her, the spirit that was upon her, they uh, they were more concerned about the profit that they could make off of her than her welfare. God help us today, Amen, to get to the place to where we are, we are concerned about the souls of lost men and women and boys and girls on the face of this earth. God, don't let us get to the point to where that we're more worried about what they're able to give. They were only worried about the prophet was gone. Because of that, they captured Paul and Silas on the way to go to Lydia's home. Amen. And spent some time explaining the scriptures and showing with her. And they captured them. The Bible says that they beat them. Not only did they beat them, but they threw them into an inner prison. Amen. And they locked them up in, in shackles. And it is in this prison cell Paul and Silas begins to sing a song. How can you sing a song when you're in prison for doing what is right? Some things that you do for God is not going to make a lick of sense. It does not listen to me. If you're in this for all uh, for, for for all the prestige and, and you're in this because oh my goodness you're going to get to slip iced tea and people's going to fan you and people's going to bow down to you they're going to take their coats off they're going to lay it on the muddy streets so you don't get your new little shoes amen uh, dirty let me tell you something you're in it for the wrong reason I come to tell this church body tonight God is looking for kingdom hearted people kingdom minded people people who are serving the kingdom for the right reason and when those come up and serving it for the right reason I'm telling you God is going to do something great how can you sing a song when you're in prison for doing the right thing I don't know the song they sung maybe they sung the song there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down that's it. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing we don't have a hammer in here, boy. Get somebody fired up on that organ, my goodness. Uh, Paul found his place of contentment. I don't know where we got what what else we might have to go through. I don't know what holds two years from now, six months from now. I don't know what phase two holds from us. I don't know what phase three, phase four, phase five. I don't have a clue. But 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 saints of God, listen to me. You we must find a place where we become content in our walk, in our relationship with God. Yeah. Because if we do not find the security 
in the protection of God's promises and his word and his relationship with you and I, we're not going to be able to make it. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. As we have walked through the last eight plus weeks in a COVID-19 situation to where we were quarantined and weren't able to come, um, listen to me. And it's not just it's not just here at PLC, but there have been people in churches that have loved God. It's unquestionable. It's undeniable. They love the Lord, but yet they struggled in their walk with God, and they begin to become weak. And they started picking up things that they was once they laid on an altar. Right. Hello? Uh -huh. now, I love you enough to tell you I was very concerned as pastor when I saw some things that I saw. Because that lets me to know what God gave me in a message. Nobody's listening to the message. You've got to have a personal altar and you got to have a family altar. And it let me know who has an altar and who don't. If you don't keep yourself on an altar of repentance, an altar of sacrifice, your flesh is going to start to live again. That same God Paul that we've been talking about, he made this statement, I have to die daily. Paul was a man of God, amen, who walked in the realms of the Spirit. But he knew even in himself, brother Jared, he had to keep his old hide upon an altar, amen, because he understood, unless I myself become a castaway. I don't want to live for God, brother Mike, and get to the, get to the, the threshold of the rapture, amen, only to find to the place where I lose out with my walk with God. And don't let the devil deceive you and tell you you can do whatever you want to do and you're still going to get to go to heaven. I come against that line tonight and tell you it still takes a separated and holy life. It still takes a life that's committed and sold out to God. Amen. We've got to get back to our place to where we are pleasing God in our walk, in our talk, in our speech, in our attitude, in our service, and in our commitment to God. Don't let down now. Don't give in now. Don't go in the towel now. Don't let, don't slack up now. But get as strong as you can get. Move. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. You gotta make up in your mind. I'm gonna live for God. And even if living for God calls to me, I'm to die for God. I'm gonna do the commitment. I want to be content. That no matter what stage of life I find myself in, I want to be content. Because God is the reason I live. Listen to me, and please understand, pastors, that I'm bragging on anything of what Michelle and I, but if this, if I was in this for building houses, I'd be gone a long time ago. If I was in this for riches, I'd be gone a long time ago. Listen to me. You have to settle some stuff. I can take you to an altar in the old Lee Road Church on Highway 40. I can take you to the very spot that in a prayer meeting I settled something inside of me. Brother Justin, I settled it. Yes. That I don't care what comes, I'm going to live for you, God. Yeah. And I can tell you since I made that commitment, that was years ago. That commitment has been challenged. There's been moments where I couldn't stand on the commitment. I had to get down on my knees on that commitment because I was getting hit by so much stuff. But if you could get like Paul, hey man, I need to hurry. But if we can get like Paul, you, you and I, we can live a contented lifestyle. Amen. Because it's not about, it's not about what God could give us. Paul lived his life, Brother Nathan, by what he could give back to him. Here's the secret, brothers and sisters. Sister Paige, 
You want to know what made Paul such an amazing man of God that got his name written in the Hall of Fame, in the Word of God? It's because he never got over what God did for him. He never forgot what his road to Damascus experienced. I wonder today, has we, have we forgot our experience at an altar where God shone his marvelous light on us and he took the darkness out of our life and he put the light of truth uh, and he put his word and his spirit inside of us uh, and we put on Christ in waters of baptism. Does anybody still, amen, are you still grateful that God forgave you? Are you still thankful that God found you and he refused to leave you like he found you? shouting his praise. It was found in the overwhelming gratitude of thanksgiving that Jesus found him and changed his life forever. That is what Paul found his contentment in. It wasn't on things. It was because of the thing that God did for him. Paul never got over his conversion. And can I just tell you, contentment is an attitude of thanksgiving. Contentment is an attitude of thanksgiving. If you will live in a realm of thanksgiving, then you will live a life of contentment. In that very night, with a contented heart and with a soul, the jail began to shake and everybody was set free from their shackles and the jailer and his family was baptized with joy, receive, re, with joy and receive the gift of the Spirit. We can find in Acts chapter 13 and 52, you can go there and find out when the disciples was filled with joy, they also was filled with the Holy Ghost. You will find it extremely hard to convince Paul that he should not be so happy about his Holy Ghost experience. You're going to find it very hard to convince him, you need to calm down, Chachi. You, 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 you clap your hands way too much. You shout way too much. It, 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 we don't do that kind of stuff here. You need to sit down. <laughs> I'm about to tell my story about Shout John. Anybody know Shout John? Oh, yeah. oh I'm going to do it anyhow. <laughs> Shout John was an elder man that had lived for God for years and, and he went to a church in this particular church that he went to amen he went up and he sat on the front row and, and there was something about John he was very thankful he was very grateful what he had and what God did for him he was not he was not ashamed to show his gra gratitude and his thankfulness and John went on that front of that church and and uh John began to stand up and he began to clap his hands and he began to worship and he had exuberant praise in his spirit and, and after the church uh, some of the people had got together and said, ooh, we got to do something about John. We don't have that kind of worship around here. We don't do that kind of praise around here. And uh, so the next Sunday come along and John got back up there again and did the same thing again because it, let me tell you something, when it's inside of you, there ain't nothing going to change it. If you'll get him where he's supposed to be, there ain't nothing out here that can ever penetrate to where your praise is. Your praise is not predicated on what's going on in this world. It's not predicated on what's going right in your life. There is a praise that gets down inside of your heart and your soul and your spirit that there is nothing that should be able to rob you of your praise. So shout John. Amen. They decided after church that they were going to go visit on Shout John. So when they got out to Shout John's house, John was out there plowing with the old mule. And so they all got out of the pasture and 
few of the uh, deacons got out of the church and got out of the car and they walked up to John and they began to tell John, John, we're not that kind of church and and uh, we just we just cannot have you shout like you shout and and uh, you just cause too much eruption in the church and we just we just can't have that in our church and and uh, John looked at him and he said, Sir, he said, You see that land you just drove across? He said, Sir, God gave me that land. He said, Sir, he said, You see all those nine kids on the on the front porch? He said, Sir, not one time have I ever had to go to the hospital because of one of those nine children. He said, Sir, he said, You see this crop that's yielding this fruit out here? He said, God gave me that crop. Uh, he said, Sir, he said, You see this old mule that I'm I'm plowing out here with? Uh, that old mule has been around a long time, uh, but that that mule has plowed a lot of fields for me. Uh, and he said, Sir, he said, if you don't want me shouting in your church, uh, he said, hold my mule. And he started shouting right there because he said, I don't care what you think. Uh, Amen. You can't take the shout out of me. If you don't want me shout where you at, uh, amen. You're not going to take the shout out of me because you didn't give me the shout uh, and you can't take the shout out of me. We need to tell the devil, you didn't give me the shout uh, and you can't take the shout out of me uh, because you don't want the shout. Uh, Jesus owns my shout. why God gives me so many pages these last several since this COVID-19 God has, has got me in a whole different place Amen. I've never in my life have I ever walked up to a pulpit with so many pages of notes don't get nervous I'm not going to give all, all of them to you tonight Amen but I am come to tell you there is a secret to get to be content in God Amen saints of God, if we don't get there, I'm sorry, but I, 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 I just, I, I, I'm afraid for the Christianity. I'm afraid that they can't even defeat the bear and the lion when there's a Goliath fixing to step on the scene. I'm concerned because I understand. Oh, I gotta move on. We will find it we will very find it very extremely hard to tell Paul you need to you need to pipe down, go you, you, you need to, you know, really call you a little extremist. Paul, you need to just calm down. Second Corinthians twelve and ten. Amen. We find Paul saying it again, you can stand. For the sake of Christ, this is what Paul is saying. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content. But he said, this is where I find my content in. Seems totally opposite of what really was, what we would say. He said, I, I am content with. What is he saying? Weakness? How can you be content in weakness? I'm content in insults. You mean to tell me when people are insulting me for their slurs and their remarks in my life, I'm supposed to be content? Hello? I am content in hardships? You mean I have to struggle? You mean I really have to eat bologna instead of steaks every night? You really? I mean, really? I mean, I gotta wake up and be and have flat tires on my vehicle. Wait a minute, God! I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. Everything's supposed to not break. Everything's supposed to be well. Everything's supposed to be going. And but hardships, Paul? Are you serious? You can be content in hardships? In persecution, in calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Paul had a hold of something, church. And I believe the church of today needs to get a hold of the same thing Paul had a hold of. And God helped me to get there. Let me just read this last thing to you and I'll quit. I went ahead and scrolled to the last page. Philippians 4 and 6 and 13. Here's what Paul was writing when he was in jail. When he was addressing to the church of Philippi. And it's, it's a word for us here tonight. Those of you who are watching, by the way, of Facebook Live, or if you're in this building tonight, listen to me. Hear the word of the Lord. But Paul began to tell the church this. Be anxious for nothing. There's a lot of people suffering with anxiety right now. There's a lot of people all that can't sleep at night because of what's going on. Paul said, if you'll learn to be content, don't be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, everybody say the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. You want to know how to be content? Verse, tell, verse 7 tells you, has this pan pandemic robbed you of your contentment? If it has caused you to struggle, then Paul wrote something for you as well. Paul wanted you and I, and I close with this, Paul wanted you and I to med meditate upon these things. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things that are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. In verse 13, he said this, and this is where Paul found his contentment at. I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. Tonight it's, a let, it's 8, 8, 11. But I wonder tonight whether you want to come to the altar, whether you want to kneel at your seat. I wonder if you just need to just spend a little time with God tonight and just tell him, help you to stay content in your walk and relationship with you. God did not give you this message simply because it was a good thing, good topic to talk on. But God's trying to remind this church body tonight that there is a contentment you can find in Him. And I don't mean to point out anything, or, but Sister Cindy, through everything you've had to walk through, personally, family, circumstance, so many different things but still yet here you stand because you found that the contentment is not in these things but it's in one called Jesus and that has caused you to be unshakable unmovable don't mean that sometimes we gotta hit our knees don't mean that sometimes we just, as the old saying, pull our own self up by our own bootstraps. For everything that you have walked through, Sister Sue, there is a place called contentment. It's a secret place that only God and you can go. Father, with the anointing on me, I speak peace into the minds of these precious people. God, with 
the spirit of the anointing upon me. I speak, God, into every storm. I speak into every God circumstance that they are facing and fighting today, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I speak, God, the Lord, would you calm these storms? God, in an email today, I had to send an email to a man, God, the Lord, that is under attack, God, but I send him the word, Lord, that you said that you were a very present help in the time of trouble. God, I speak the promises of God over this congregation and those who are watching by the way of Facebook Live. I pray over them today, God, that they will get back to that place to where that they find their personal altar and to where they settle some stuff inside of them that no matter what comes and no matter what goes, they're going to live for you and serve you with all of their heart and with all their soul and with all of their might and with all of their strength. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for protecting us. And thank you for supplying our aid each and every day. I love you, Lord. And God, I hold nothing back, but I give it all. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus.
Choose faith. 